If you would turn to Isaiah 59, beginning with verse 1. Isaiah chapter 59, beginning with verse 1. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Father, as a willing servant, I come before your people to be used by you. Speak through me, teach through me, challenge through me, reward, Lord, your people. Let us not just be hearers of the word, but doers also. Because we know you said you will withhold no good thing from those who walk uprightly. Now, Lord, bless us with your word. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The title of this afternoon's message is Three Things Remain the Same. Three things remain the same. God's hand is not shortened. His power is not all lessened or reduced of power. Let me say that again. God has not been reduced to our level. God has not been reduced to the world's level. God is higher and more powerful than any man, anything on this earth. His arm is not too short. Whether we consider the extent of God's power or the ability of God, know that he can reach as far as ever and with a strong hand as ever. Uh, we live in a changing world. Our culture is always changing. Amen? Each generation witnesses changes that would amaze our ancestors. Uh, my mom never really understood technology the way little kids understand technology today. Uh, yes, yes, yes. See, each generation witnesses changes. Science and technology breakthroughs have changed our lifestyle. We're getting ready to have artificial intelligence, meaning people that are not for real, people, humans that are not real will be teaching. times I think that the that the flood is getting ready to repeat itself but God said I'll never destroy the world again with the flood but even though many things in life will change there are three things that remain the same number one God's power to save remains the same it will never ever change Hallelujah. Secondly, God's ability to hear and answer prayers remains the same. God still answers prayer as he did yesterday and today and forevermore. Uh, can, I, can I get a praying church this afternoon? And thirdly, the destructiveness of sin remains the same. Uh -huh. So let us explore these unchanging truths. Number one, verse one of Isaiah 59. God's power to save remains the same. Behold, 
The Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. This is a statement that has remained true through the ages. This is a statement that will remain true forever. Whatever physical dangers we may face, God is still able today and forevermore able to save. Someone may be a little sick this afternoon. We need to keep Elder Mike in prayer. Because we need to change some things. God uses resources, but God is still able to save. God is able to save our brother that time when he was failing in his health. And he, God had to get him to the hospital. But now the, the devil, the devil is always attacking. Because the devil only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But the devil's a liar. God still saves us from physical illnesses and physical harm. There's a evil, evil, evil people in this world that are looking to harm people for no reason at all. For no reason at all. But God is still able to save us and protect us. Whatever physical danger we may face, God is able today and forevermore able to save. Turn to Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14, beginning with verse 10. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They prayed to the Lord. They said, Moses, they said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone. Let us serve the Egyptian. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptian than to die here in this desert. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will. still our God fights for us if God be for us who can be against us who can be against us who can be against us oh my brothers and sisters I'm here to tell you he opened the Red Sea to save Israel from Pharaoh's army they were against the Red Sea and the Egyptian were behind them they said there's nowhere to go we're getting ready to get killed but God says do Moses look at your Egyptian look at your enemies because today you will see them no more you may be going through something today and God is telling you today I need you to look with your spiritual eyes. Open up your spiritual eyes so that you can see that adversary that's coming against you today. Today you will see it no more. You got to believe that. You got to believe that. If you're going through some financial troubles today, open up your spiritual eyes and know that those people that are coming against you, coming against your finances today, today, know that you will never see them again. God's power is able to save. Trapped against the Red Sea, the Israelites... The power, love, and a sound mind. Don't ever, ever say you're stressed again. Don't ever, ever say you're depressed again. Don't ever, ever say you're afraid because that is not from God. Fear is not from God. He said, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power. A spirit of power, a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. A mind that, 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 and a peace that surpasses all understanding.
their only response was fear, whining. Oh, woe is me. Oh, don't whine me, whine me all the time. Whining and despair. Where was their trust in God? If God tells you I can still say, trust him. Because our God is able. God's power to save remains the same. The children of Israel forgot. He reminded me that God is speaking to us in this church. And God spoke to Lawrence and Kathy and said, before the year is out, and they were having problems getting that house. Y'all don't know the whole story. It seemed like a miracle was going to have to take place. And God says, I am still able to provide. And they got their house, a beautiful house, on the corner lot with a nice pool, big old living room getting ready to knock walls out the house. It's theirs. And we know how the enemy came up against them in their old house. Uh huh. But our God, our God remains the same. I have the power to save. I have the power to give. I have the power to provide. Don't forget that. Uh, by focusing on God's faithfulness, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. God can help. God can deliver God was still teaching the Israelites that God can always be trusted to save those who trust him to protect them from all dangers. Being homeless is dangerous. But God says, I can provide you all the shelter you need. Just trust me. But by focusing on God's faithfulness in the past, we can face crisis. Oh. By focusing on God's faithfulness in the past, hmm. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Oh, have your way, Holy Spirit. Turn to Daniel. Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. You can read this when you get home. It's Daniel chapter 6, 1 through 16. And then we go to go, we're going to go to verse 19. I'm going to read that to you. But let me tell you what happened here. Daniel became very powerful man and the kings, not the king of kings, but a king's kingdom, a man king kingdom. And he gave him position and people got jealous, but they couldn't figure out how they can get him out of office. They didn't like him. So they said, but one thing we can do, let's go to the king and tell him to dedicate a day just for him and that no one is to pray to any other God, but just to acknowledge him. King said, yeah, I like that idea. Let's make it a decree. Let's put it in the law. And they knew David was going to pray three times a day and maybe more, but for sure three times a day and when they saw Daniel I might have said David when they saw Daniel praying they went to the king and said he ain't doing what you don't do he in there praying to his God and you said and once you put it in law it can't be broken the king was a little upset with himself because he made this decree and he had to keep to his promise. He brought Daniel in and said, Daniel, you messed up. You, you messed up, dude. You shouldn't have been praying to, to your God. I know you love your God, <laughs> but you shouldn't have prayed to him. So we have to throw you in the lion's den. Pray to your God. <laughs> pray to your God now that he saved you. Uh-huh. 
So he threw him into the lion's den, and the king was so disturbed that he said, I'm not even going to eat. I don't want no entertainment. <laughs> I just pray that Daniel's God save him. Verse 19, at the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, may the king live forever. My God sent his angel, and he shut the mouths of the lion. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty. Wow. This powerful pagan king was well aware of Daniel's consistent faith and trust in God. This pagan king respected Daniel, even though he didn't share Daniel's faith. And now he was forced to punish him. No one could touch the person. Mm, mm. No one can trust. No one can touch the person who trusts in God and obeys his will until God decides that person time on earth is done. So why are you scared? Although we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he said, do not fear no evil for I am with you. Uh Stop worrying about how you're going to die. Stop worrying about tomorrow, for today has enough problems of its own. Oh, can I preach to you? Trusting God brings immeasurable peace, a peace that surpasses all understanding. The same God who delivered Daniel will deliver you. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. When you pray for God's will to be carried out, you are trusting God with your life. I trust God with my life. <laughs> mm -hmm. No weapon, no weapon, no weapon formed against me will prosper. My God is my rock, my salvation, my high tower, my refuge. <laughs> trust God. Know that he's able to save you. Whatever you're going through, he's able no one can touch a person that trusts in God. When you pray, pray that God's will be carried out. You can, you can lay your concerns. Oh, do it this afternoon. Do it this afternoon. You can lay your concerns, worries, and fears at Jesus' feet. Matthew 6.10 says, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, when we pray your will be done, we are not passively resigning ourselves to fate, but we are stating that God will accomplish his perfect purpose in our lives. God has a purpose for all of us. And he said, I'm going to carry out that purpose. Ain't nobody going to be able to distort it, destroy it, change it. I got this. I got this. <laughs> our God, the God of Abraham. Isaac and Jacob, the God of Israel, is able to save the soul from eternal death. The God I serve saved a man named Nicodemus from a religion that had no life in it. <laughs> it was called legalism. It was called legalism. Following all the rules. But God says, that's not the way to heaven. The way to heaven is having faith in me. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son. that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. But Nicodemus said, well, we got to be, we got to do this and we got to do that. We got to do this, we got to do that. He said, no, I can change you, Jesus says. But you got to be born again. Mm-hmm. See, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was explaining to Nicodemus the importance of a spiritual new birth, saying that people enter the kingdom of God not by living based on rules, but by receiving a new life from God. Jesus is the same yesterday. He said, I, I, Jesus, am the way. I, Jesus, am the truth. No one comes unto the Father 
but by me. Uh huh. He's the only way. Uh huh. To believe is more than having an intellectual agreement that Jesus Christ is God. <clears throat> Even the demons know that and they tremble. <clears throat> It means to put our trust and confidence in him that he alone can save us. <clears throat> it means that we should put Jesus Christ in charge of our present life and eternal destiny. Secondly, three things remain the same. The second thing that remains the same, God's power to save Remains the same. Jesus saved the thief on the cross. Guaranteed him paradise. That's still number one. <laughs> if you remember the story, there were two criminals on the cross. One, next, one was next to Jesus to the left. One was next to Jesus on the right. And one arrogant fool said, hey, if you God, save yourself and us. Get us off this cross. But the thief said, Listen, we deserve what we're getting. He didn't do anything. He said, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. He said, today, today, you will be in paradise with me. Mm -hmm. He saved him. He was on his deathbed. He still saved him. The second thing that remains, and we're on the second thing. The second thing that remains the same will never change is God's ability to hear and answer prayer. Today in Bible Thumpers, we talked about prayer. Jesus taught us about prayer. Because sometimes people, they stop praying for some reason. Or they don't pray enough. Or they only pray when they're in a crisis. But God hears and still answers prayers. Uh -huh. God's ear is not heavy that it cannot hear. God is still in verse 1 of Isaiah, but, but just listen to me what the Holy Spirit is saying. God's ear is not heavy that it cannot hear. God heard the prayers of the Israelites when they were slaves in Egypt. Exodus 3, verse 7 and 8 says, the Lord says, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land <laughs> into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. God called Moses from the burning bush to deliver Israel and tell them he heard their prayers. Jesus is saying that to, a, to, to God right now because he is sitting on the throne of right, uh, uh, on the right side of an awesome almighty God interceding on our behalf. Jesus hear our cries and he speaks to God in words as Holy Spirit said in words that God only can uh, uh, interpret. Hoo-hoo. He said, I know what you're going through. I know your miseries. I know your, your doubts. I know what you're up against. School's tough. Going to school and working is tough. He said, I know it's hard, but I'm going to get you through it. I know you don't have enough money to do this, but I'm going to provide. Because I know your misery. I know what you're going through. And I hear your cry. Every Not only did God hear their prayer, he answered their prayers with action. God is not only a hearer of our prayers, but a doer also. The song was sung today, when we are faithless, he is still faithful. Throughout the Bible, God has heard prayers and has answered. God told Jeremiah to pray big and expect answers. Holy Spirit is telling you right now, pray big. Stop thinking God can't do what you expect him to do. Expect anything and know that anything is possible because all things are possible with God. I don't serve an impotent God. My God is powerful. 
His arm is not too short to save. He hears and still answers prayer. Jeremiah 33.3, God said, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. God assured Jeremiah that he only needed to pray to God and he would answer. God is ready to answer our prayers, but we must come to him. It's true that God could take care of our needs without us asking, but when we do ask, we are acknowledging that he alone is God and that he alone is all-powerful. You're not going to say, well, I thank God, I thank my boss. We're not going to say it's, it's not uh, uh, what you know, but who you know in the world, but it is true. It ain't what you know, it is who you know, and we know God. The Bible says we have not because we what? My Bible tells me, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open for you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be open. Jesus tells us he has not changed. People change. But there are three things that God will never change. And the second is that he hears our prayers and he answers. Lastly, for those who are keeping time, it's 410. Lastly, I've only been preaching 20 minutes. Some, some, it's funny how some people say, man, that's you know, like he.
I'm human. You know, you know all have, you're going to start, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But you don't confess that you're a sinner. You don't confess that you did wrong. And God chooses, when he says he chooses not to hear you, he hears you, but he chooses not to answer. You know, sometimes you ask your parents, when you used to ask your parents for something, you'd be saying, Mom, Mom, did you hear me? Yeah, I heard you. But they don't answer. They don't give you what you want. Yeah, I heard you. You better get on about your business. Don't ask me again. David confessed his sins. We may not remember to pray at the very moment we have a bad thought or commit the sin of unforgiveness or refuse to obey God's word. But when Holy Spirit brings it to our attention, we should confess it and get back on track. Elijah prayed with great power because of the way he lived life. James 5.17 says, Elijah was a human being even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. The Bible says the prayers of a righteous man is powerful and effective. God talks to me. I hear God. He said, my sheep hear my voice. And when I pray, God answers my prayers. Oh, because I don't regard iniquity in my heart. It's easy to blame others and make excuses for our evil thoughts and actions, but a strong believer in Christ, on the other hand, accepts responsibility of his or her actions, confess them, and ask God for forgiveness. My brothers and sisters and those who are listening, we cannot escape the consequences of sin. Turn to Numbers Three, I mean, Numbers 32, 23. Numbers 32, 23. But if you fail to do this, you will be sinning against the Lord, and you may be sure that your sin will find you out. Sin has its consequences. Although God forgives, that doesn't mean if you steal, you're not going to jail. I forgive you, but you're going to jail. I'm going to protect your booty. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm give you grace. Somebody got a kick out of that. <laughs> Said you know where I'm coming from, don't you? Although God forgives, that doesn't mean if you steal, you're not going to jail. David had committed adultery and had Uriah killed. And guess what happened to David? He lost his first baby. God took his first baby. The consequences of his sin were Bathsheba. First, he committed adultery. Then he tried to be tricky, tricky David. Hey, get Uriah in here. His wife is pregnant. How'd she get pregnant? He been fighting the war. Just go get her in Uriah. So Uriah, sleep, drink, and be merry, and sleep with your wife. And Uriah said, King David, you know, I hear what you're saying, but I can't enjoy life while my men out there fighting. Send me back out there to fight. He said, man. All right, commanders, when Uriah goes out there to fight, draw back. Let him get killed. It doesn't mean if you get drunk and get in an accident that you, would lose, you won't lose your license and your job or worse, go to jail. Sin is the same yesterday and today, but not forevermore. Because when Jesus comes to get the church, sin will be no more. But until then, still has, sin still has the same effect on people as when Adam sinned. In conclusion, God's power to save remains the same. God's ability to hear our prayers and answer our prayers remains the same. And the destructiveness of sin remains the same. It will mess you up. Let us pray. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, there may be someone here 
that needs to be saved. You said it in your word that you still saved today. Someone needs to receive eternal life. They need to be born again. If that's you and you want to make sure, you, you said you, you prayed this prayer before, but you, you really just prayed it because it was just something that the pastor said to do or your mother told you to do. But today you want to sincerely do it from your heart. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe your son Jesus Christ died on the cross for all my sins. And I receive him right now as my personal savior. I pray this in the Lord Jesus Christ's name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, the Lord Jesus Christ came into your heart and saved you. Our God is an awesome God. And he still heals as he did yesterday, as he's going to do right now and forevermore. Elder Mike, come on up. I'm going to pray for you. I just need the church to continue to be in prayer. You are always merciful Though I remember